scripture for this morning is coming to us out of uh, first letter to Timothy and Paul continues to write advice. This time he's giving prayer advice to his friend and co-disciple Timothy. We'll pick up in the second chapter, the first eight verses. First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there's also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. Pray for everyone. Everyone can pray. That is Paul's advice to Timothy on prayer. Everyone can pray. When I thought about everyone can pray, I thought of Roy Rogers' horse Trigger. Even Trigger can pray. Back when Roy Rogers was on television, I remember a film clip where Roy had Trigger count to three, dance, walk on his hind legs, and pray. Talk about a good role for good role model for kids. Roy Rogers was so squeaky clean that even his horse could be a role model. His horse knew how to pray. So naturally, this would lead to us trying to uh, find something to that record. So if you'll permit me one indulgence, um, I'll go ahead and bring up what I was thinking about. So there we go. Roy Rogers and Trigger, and there's Trigger taking a knee. Um, and uh, that that's just etched in my mind, uh, that one segment. And of course, we got to give equal time to the most common of our household friends. So yes, we went and found some cute pictures of uh, family pets, dogs and cats, uh, doing their prey. So please let your canines and your felines know they had equal time on uh, worship this morning. Go ahead and bow out of our Sunday morning PowerPoint. Uh, just, just had to bring that in because there is no end to cuteness and there is no end to the need for prayer. Um, everyone can pray and all of us need prayer. As Paul is teaching Timothy about prayer, Paul gives Timothy four pointers on prayer when he says that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone. Do not panic. There's not going to be a test. But supplications is from the Greek word deesis, which means petitions, things we ask for ourselves. So supplication is when we ask God to help us with something for ourselves. And then prayers, uh, prayers specifically means prosukas, uh, prayers which means talk to God. Paul saying to Timothy, be sure and really talk to God, communicate. And then intercessions. These are the intuxis. Uh, these are pleading. In other words, it means we plead for others. We pray for others. And then, of course, thanksgivings. Be sure and remember to pray to God with our thanksgiving. Um, so this means giving God our gratitude. And uh, also we need to remember that the Greek word eucharistis uh, is um, one of the words that we use even to this day when we talk about our Holy Communion, because Jesus gave thanks in all three Gospels when he breaks the bread and gives it to the disciples. He's giving thanks over the communion. And also, these four points that Paul is sharing, uh, this is the heart of the four-point prayer that we have taught in Sunday School Confirmation and Youth Group. Again, it is a simple and direct form of prayer that anyone can do. It does not require flowery speech or advanced religious education. Everyone can pray. Most of us on a good day can remember four things. So for the sake of review, here they are. 
Again, the first point is greet God or praise God. Open the prayer with words that honor God. And then next is the thanking God. That's that Thanksgiving part. To say thank you to God for our daily bread, for answering our prayers, for helping us with the things that go right and the things that go wrong. And then there's the asking part. So that's the time for the supplications and the intercessions. So that's when we ask God for daily bread for ourselves. We also ask for healing for others and for self and also to help us with tough decisions. And again, praying for others with their own tough decisions in life. And then there's the closing part. It's where we say the amen. It's, it's good to have a nice close to say goodbye in a meaningful way, again, in a way that respects God. So uh, the four points again are greet, thank, ask, and amen. These can be remembered and put to work at any time for any prayer situation. Again, everyone can pray. Everyone needs to be prayed for. Speaking of trigger, I want to talk about prayer triggers. We've talked a lot about who to pray for. We might talk also about when to pray. Do we just pray on Sunday when we are in church? Or do we pray on the other days of the week? Do we pray at other times of the day? Do we pray when the sun is shining and everything is wonderful? Or do we pray when the storm is coming and the wind is howling our name? Do we pray in the foxhole? Do we pray at the peace ceremony? When do we pray? What triggers us to pray? A crisis, a happy ending. Lots of things can be prayer triggers. Some are spontaneous, some are intentional. A plan to pray every morning, first thing, is planning a morning prayer trigger. I am awake, therefore I will pray. Maybe breakfast, lunch, and supper are good prayer triggers. Maybe we are triggered to pray every time someone puts a meal in front of us. Maybe we pray when we hear a siren. Dear Lord, wherever that car is going, let them be healed. Let them be safe. What are the prayer triggers that we plan for our daily life? Morning triggers, bedtime triggers. When do our prayers go into action? When do our hands fold and our lips start moving? So we have looked at Paul's advice to Timothy. Pray for everyone. Everyone can pray. Paul goes on to say, pray for our kings and those in high places. Because we want to live peaceful lives. People in leadership roles have extra responsibilities. They have a lot of people to care for. The burden can get heavy and they can catch a lot of criticism. It would be nice if they could catch a prayer. It would be nice if they were on the receiving end of faithful prayer instead of just endless flack from secular sources. Pray for everyone. If Trigger can pray, we can pray. If Timothy can pray, we can pray. We can pray with four points, five points, or just let it flow. Just start talking and let the Holy Spirit sort out the rest. We all need prayer and we need to pray for each other. And we need each other to pray for us. Paul says to Timothy that we should pray with holy hands, lifting each other up in prayer. Lifting each other up in prayer without anger or argument. What would it trigger in the world if we all had a Bible in our hands instead of a knife or a sword? What does it trigger in us if we have God in our hearts and anger goes out the window. If everyone is prayed for, everyone is cared for. Amen.